Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So today we'll be talking about a very unusual but beautiful looking succulent called as Echeveria raindrops. Now this belongs to the genus of Echeveria. It is an hybrid species. Unfortunately, the parentage of this hybrid species is unknown. Now there is a very interesting story behind this particular succulent. Now Mr. Dick Wright was the one who introduced this particular hybrid and over the course of years he distributed a lot of seeds now when the seeds were distributed and when people were growing this particular echeveria raindrops from seeds and suddenly there were two different varieties of uh, succulents that started to grow out of it one of them is called as echeveria new heights which you can see the picture on the screen right now and the one on the right hand side is Echeveria Heart's Delight. So basically both of these were grown from the seeds that were labeled as Echeveria raindrops. Now it's not quite clear whether it was a simple mutation or whether there was some mix up or seeds or whether there was any more hybrids that were created but nevertheless we have three different beautiful succulents that are available in the market. You will find Echeveria raindrops very commonly in your nurseries or in plant stores even for that matter Echeveria new heights as well as Echeveria hearts delight is also available in a lot of plant stores and nurseries now there are certain disadvantages related with this succulent because it is an hybrid species it is going to be slightly weaker so usually people who are from coastal areas or people who belong to an environment that is very warm and humid in most cases you might find it very challenging to grow this variety of succulents now just like any other echeverias this particular variety of echeveria is not frost hardy it prefers temperatures between 18 degrees celsius up to 30 degrees celsius now if your succulent is acclimated and adapted well it can even handle up to 35 degrees celsius but definitely it cannot handle very low temperatures and it cannot handle very high temperatures Talking about the soil, it remains the same what we use for our other succulents. The soil has to be loose, porous, well draining and should dry out before the next watering. That brings us to the part of watering. Please ensure that you do not overwater this succulent otherwise it will get rotted. So ensure that you check your soil before watering your succulent. Ensure that the soil is completely bone dry and then do a complete watering which means you need to water until the water starts passing through the drain hole. Talking about the pot size you can use a smaller pot which is around uh, 3 to 4 inches would be good enough. Avoid using a plastic pot because it tends to retain moisture. You can use a concrete terracotta or clay pot because they tend to be very porous and they tend to absorb all the extra moisture from the soil. Talking about light requirements, just like other succulents, it requires good amount of light. Either you can provide with indirect bright light or morning direct sunlight for 5 to 6 hours. If you want to see those beautiful colors, then definitely you have to give them a good amount of morning direct sunlight for 5 to 6 hours. Talking about dormancy because this belongs to the genus of Echeveria so it tends to go dormant during the winters and its active growing period is during the summer. So if you are a person who tends to use fertilizers then you can use fertilizers once a month during the summer season. Talking about pest attack, yes it does get affected with mealybugs because at the end of the day it is a hybrid variety, it tends to be slightly weaker compared to other natural species. So do a routine check if you happen to notice there are any mealybugs, try to treat them at the early stage. Now there is another very interesting fact about this particular variety of succulent. Now you can see the one that I'm holding over here has a more consistent amount of these raindrops or bumps as compared to the one over here. You can see a lot of the bumps have been skipped on that particular succulent whereas this one has a more consistent bumps or I would say the raindrops. They are pretty much on all the leaves and they have not skipped any of the leaves. Whereas the other one you can see that those bumps and the raindrops are not very consistent and they have skipped a couple of leaves. Now I definitely knew that there was something very different about both of these varieties. So the Echeveria raindrop that I'm holding right now is basically in its natural form. So basically this was either created by propagation or it was grown by seeds. That is why it is having this consistent raindrops on all the leaves. 
but over here as you can see over here most of the bumps or the raindrops are missing and in fact few of the leaves do not even have them so i did a little bit of research and i got to know that this particular echeveria that you're seeing over here which does not have these consistent bumps and is slightly larger compared to the other one now that is because this is a tissue cultured raindrops Hence, it looks quite different from the other Echeveria raindrop. Now, guys, it completely depends upon you. Whichever you want to buy, both of these succulents are very healthy and tend to grow very well. But if you're a kind of a person who's looking out for this particular succulent variety just because of those raindrops or those consistent bumps, then you know which one you want to get. Do not get the one that is done through a tissue culture because that will not give you a consistent amount of raindrops. It is going to grow slightly larger. It won't remain as compact as the one that you're seeing on your right hand side. So again, it completely depends upon you, whichever you want to purchase or if you have already purchased, it's absolutely fine. Both of these succulents are very healthy and are beautiful. Now guys, talking about propagation, it's very, very simple to propagate an Echeveria raindrop. You can do a leaf propagation or you can do a beheading or you can even try stem cuttings. All of the three methods tend to work out really well. But what I've noticed it with leaf propagation, it's going to take a lot of time. So I usually do not do a leaf propagation. Most of the time it's not successful because it's an hybrid variety. It takes a lot of time for it to root at times it even takes almost a month or so for it to root so what i would say the best option is go for a stem cutting you can see over here i had done a stem cutting and a beheading you can see the amount of pups that have started to come out on the stem so i think by far this is the most successful and a faster way of multiplying raindrops so probably you can try this but always remember whenever you're doing a stem cutting or you're doing a beheading ensure that both the ends of the cuts have to callus before you start watering them so all of these stem cuttings now have pups and this is another echeveria raindrop again this was separated by stem cutting and you can see it's doing pretty well and you can even see all of the leaves have the raindrops they are very consistent it's not missing out on any of the leaves because these particular uh, raindrops were separated from the same mother plant and the one that i showed you earlier uh, was purchased separately from another seller so probably that was the one that was a tissue cultured raindrops so guys that's it for today i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the like button if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep propagating